today welcome to vlogmas day seven uh, i'm amanda of this amanda made you channel youtube channel excuse me um and i'm opening the Giuliani vlogmas box which is a 12 day event or vlogmas box uh and today is day seven which means i'm opening box number four um so we've had kind of like reddish brownish tan on day one straight up black on day two day three was like this blue and gray i really and the theme is, is like you know the fire cozy so i'm curious i, I don't know what day four is gonna bring um in terms of fiber or colors uh, so let's take a look i've got day four. Oh, okay all right this, this goes with the theme first we have the blessing may your spindle hooks and needles never get lost in your couch my daughter lost an entire like beater to a handheld mixer in the couch. It was clean. She was just playing with it, but it was gone for like, I didn't know it was lost in the couch. I was making a cake on Easter one year because we host Easter dinner. And like all of a sudden I was missing a beater and I couldn't find it anywhere. And I had three other adults helping me look, okay? Like we, we checked the couch. Two months later, the beater she came crawling out from behind the couch with a beater. So anyway, total side story, sorry. So this is what day four looks like. Ooh, what's that? Oh, looks like this will be a little treat. It's a stitch marker. Very nice. It says Jillian Eve Vlogmas 22. There's a little basket of yarn. This is really cute. I'm not much of a stitch marker person. But I do like ones like that, you know? All right, let's take this out. Okay, I... Does this have that shine? I don't know. All right, so we've got on both sides. Okay, all right, all right. What are we working with? I don't think... This is not the BFL silk, I can tell already. It feels different. It doesn't have quite that shine. This might be like... Shib Targi? Maybe Targi or Shibiot. Just the way that it feels. But you know, we've got like... Here, we're going with some, some flame stuff here now. We've got like this deep orangey red. You know, and we're rolling through. Oh, this is going to be bounce. Oh, look at that bounce. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Yeah. This will be fun to spin. I'm, I'm like, relatively sure this is Targi because I've spun a little bit of Targi a couple times because I like it a lot. And this feels, I don't know. I'll be interested to find out if I'm right because I'm still so new at this that, like, guessing what's, what kind of fibers and things is not something I usually try to do because I'm like, I, I have no idea. But. This one, I'm like, no, I'm, it's like, it's not, mer mm, it might be merino. No, it's too bouncy. It's got to be like Chibi or Targi, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to spin some. And I'll probably do the same thing that I've been doing, where I split the, bla the braid into, or the, whatever. I split it into three, spin. I actually... With the, with the blue one, I split it in three. I spun one one way, but then I flipped the second one around and spun, spun from the bottom, I guess. I don't, from the other end. And then with the third one, I spun the same way as I spun the first one. So when I did the plying it kind of i don't know there's 
<laughs> it's too early for me to try to explain this. Anyway, um, let's, I'm just going to spin this and I will catch up with you guys later today. We'll see if I get to process any of that uh, border luster that I skirted yesterday. I did wash the rest of a Wensleydale cross uh, fleece that I had. Um, the first half, the first half is here all washed. It needs to be picked and carded or combed. I haven't decided yet. I have a carter like machine coming on Friday. So a drum carter coming on Friday. So that'll be super fun. Anyway, I will talk to you guys later. Hi, so we have been valiantly arguing over nap time for the past, uh, I don't know, half an hour, 40 minutes. I think I've won. We shall see. But uh, what I've been doing, because it's quick and easy and I can stop if I do need to go get her, like I had to go check and make sure she didn't go to the bathroom or something um anyway what I've been doing is like I want to take notes right like I'm, I'm somebody that likes notebooks and I want to take notes on things but I found that taking notes on certain things is just not very useful for me I mean I keep my notes on my knitting projects uh either in Knit Companion or on Ravelry depending most likely on my companion really because that's where I'm reading the patterns from um but for spinning taking notes didn't really work out so well for me um I don't think like I'm never going to be the same spinner twice um is there a way to get consistency absolutely um and yes, I suppose keeping notes can help you with that. I just don't find that I work like that. Um, so I tried keeping notes, but then I just got irritated with it and stopped. Um, anything I want to know about a yarn that I've made, I can pretty much find out if I need to look it up. Like I can, I can assess the yarn that I have. I can weigh it. I can check the wraps per inch. I can measure it. I can find out how many yards it is. Um, you know, it might take a little work, but I can do that. Um, so sometimes I do, I do actually have tags that I write down, you know, yardage and weight just so that I do have an idea on that. So I guess that is kind of note taking, but so you guys could guess that I'm into washing raw fleeces now, right? And I realized that I was starting to wash fleeces. Like I have enough washed fleeces already that I'm starting to forget the information about them. And I also realized that from a, actually from, from a business standpoint and from, you know, just being aware of what I'm doing, uh, keeping track of the weight of the fiber in and then how much you actually lose per wash through washing through the processing of carding or combing um and what your actual yield is um is very valuable information if this is the route I'm probably going to go in a lot of the time um and especially if I want to start doing this for other people like I need to have a system right <laughs> so I did start writing down like I you know went back through my sale logs and everything but let me just say I, I bought my first whole raw fleece on November 6th right and today is December 7th in this time in this month I have now purchased six fleeces in a month <laughs> so what does, what does this equal out to in like pounds? Like, well, raw, that's like, uh, 
six, 13. I bought 16 pounds of raw wool to wash and process in a month. So I have to keep this kind of like organized. So that's what I've been working on. Took an old notebook, had like, I mean, it has, it had like journal entries and stuff from prior to 2020. A lot of this stuff wasn't relevant. Things from when I was going through therapy, um, dealing with postpartum depression, like, like things that were necessary at the time. You do not have to keep those things. So I ripped them all out of the notebook and I tossed them. Like, I need this for something else. I'm going to use it for something else. I don't need to reread those things. I, I really don't. Um, so anyway, I have a new notebook, new old notebook, uh, and I am keeping track of my fleeces. So for anybody that's interested, this is kind of what I'm, I mean, you can't, I don't, whatever. I'll just tell you. Um, all I'm doing is noting the date that I purchase it the where I got it from, the name of the farm, and whether I got it online, in person, like Etsy, whatever. Um, I'm noting the intake weight now, something I haven't been doing, but that I will be doing from here on out, is weighing the fiber when I get it to find out like, okay, so you told me it's 2.13 pounds when I bought it. Now, what did I actually get 2.13 pounds or did I get 2.5 or did I get you know, two point, whatever. So I'm just, did I get more or less or did I get exactly what I ordered? Um, because then I want, I'm weighing after I wash now. I didn't do that with the first two, or I'm sorry, with the first one. And then I'm gonna measure and weigh the, the waste from combing or carding. And, um, and then measure what I actually, what usable fiber I have, you know, really, um, like, even waste yarn can be tossed into, from what I understand, can be tossed into a bat and used in that manner. So I don't plan on having a whole ton of, like, waste, but I'm not sure. And then I want to double check all of that and weigh the finished skeins if I actually, in fact, spin it myself. Um, I also want to make note of what I use to clean it. Is it power scour, you know? how many soaks cold versus you know hot and all that jazz so anyway i thought i'd share that it's a rainy gloomy day here there's not much going on my kid and i are cranky so i'm gonna do a little bit more work and then uh go knit on my miles shirt jacket some more i'll see you then i totally forgot to tell you so i skirted that fleece i i weighed the the skirting waste from the fleece, that is over five pounds. When I bought this unskirted stuff from the farm, uh, we didn't weigh it. Like there was no scale. It was very clearly a large amount. So I just was like, whatever, I'll give you 25 bucks. That's fine. Um, but like <laughs> the skirting waste alone is five pounds. And I don't even like, there's a, there is a big old like 18 gallon tub of fiber upstairs that I have not yet weighed that I still need to process. I have no idea how much fiber I have now. I totally forgot to even like add that one in. I mean, you know, like this is, this is what we do. That's what I do. But I'm like pretty excited to see how this goes. <laughs> It's going to be like 13 pounds of fleece to process or something. Who knows? I'll talk to you later. Bye.